Hello and welcome to a new video. An amazing thing happened these days. Alpha Zero came back to play some chess. But these are not exactly the normal chess games that we know. Vladimir Kramnik, the 14th world champion, thinks that chess has become less imaginative nowadays. For example, the last world championship match played between Carson and Caruana had 12 draws in the classical games and had to be decided in a rapid playoff. So everyone wants to see more decisive games and creativity and less sterile chess. So Kremnik's idea to achieve that is to disallow castling. In his opinion, preventing the kings to hide will make the game more dynamic and entertaining. But don't we already have Fisher Random to save us from uh, boredom? Well, this is what Kramnik has to say on the matter. Fisher Random is an interesting format, but it has its drawbacks. So I'm quoting from a chess.com article written by Kramnik himself. In particular, the non-traditional starting positions make it difficult for many amateurs to enjoy the game until more familiar positions are achieved. Isn't that the point of these changes, to have unfamiliar positions? And that we have to play using our brains instead of uh, relying on uh, memory and playing on autopilot. We need unfamiliar positions to, to play creatively. Finally, it also seems to lack an aesthetic quality found in traditional chess, which makes it less appealing for both players and viewers, even if it does occasionally result in an exciting game. I have to kind of disagree here again. Why would a traditional chess position be more aesthetic? than a Fisher Random position. Traditional chess positions are a subset of the Fisher Random positions, and if anything, the Fisher Random positions that do not appear in traditional chess should be more exciting and uh, maybe even more aesthetic looking. So anyway, Kramnik went to DeepMind to find some adjustment to the rules of chess that will result in more space for human creativity, and the end result was Prevent castling and the games will be more interesting. I have to disagree here again. It will be more interesting until people adjust to it and then it might get even more boring than before, in my opinion. Fisher Random Chess has more variations, more possibilities and if it is broken in any way then maybe we should fix it because I think this is our best bet for entertaining chess. For example, remove maybe starting positions that are dubious and leave only those that are balanced. But let me ask, what is your opinion about this? Let me know in the comments below what you think on this matter. So the end of the story is that Alpha Zero was trained again over millions and millions of games until it became a no casting expert. And today I will show you a game that he played against himself. We have a D4 opening, the game started with d4, d5, and after knight c3, we are already out of the book. And this is the Higorian variation of the Queen's Pawn opening, also known as the Jobava London system, an opening that I'm experimenting myself quite a bit in, uh, in Blitz games. Now, usually White doesn't play knight c3 here because he wants to play c4 at some point and attack Black's d5 pawn. This is White's best way to put the black center under pressure. White having the first move, he has to uh, fight for the initiative and uh, put the black center under huge pressure. But in the Jubava London, White plays knight c3 and has a completely different idea. He doesn't want to put pressure on d5, but instead he plays bishop f4 and his idea is to make the c5 break much more difficult to achieve here for black. This is the typical break that black wants to achieve in the d4, d5 openings and these two moves are designed to stop that. For example, if black plays now c5, this would be a bit premature because white could maybe take here and then uh, try to hang on to this pawn. Alternatively, white can just simply play e3 here and then with the b5 square under control by uh, the bishop, white is constantly threatening to play knight b5 with an attack on c7, forking the king and the rook. 
So black needs to uh, be careful. For example, if uh, black plays something like e6, then already after knight b5, white is much, much better here. Queen a5 doesn't work here because uh, this knight is defended. And white could play here simply c3, but even better is b4 with tempo on the queen and threatening knight c7 next. And it doesn't really matter how black recaptures here because uh, that's one tempo uh, that white needs in order to win this rook on the corner. For example, if pawn takes, then after knight c7 check and king d7, white can't really take this rook yet because uh, b3 check is annoying. But after bishop d3, making room for the king. Now, this b3 check is not that dangerous. White can just play king f1 and quite simply take the rook next as uh, none of these pawn moves are, are really uh, troublesome for white. Alternatively, after b4, instead of uh, c takes on b4 here, the queen could take on b4 with check, but now this runs into c3 when the queen has to move again. And then again, knight c7 check wins the exchange of the king d7. White just simply defends the pawn with the rook, and then the knight takes the rook and white wins. So we can see that queen a5 check in this position doesn't really work. Here, black's best move is actually knight a6 to defend the c7 square. But now white just simply plays c3 and white has control over all these dark squares in, in black's camp. And this makes black's life very, very difficult, especially these two pieces find it very difficult to move and get active. An idea like bishop d7 and rook c8 fails because the knight can take on a7. For example, after bishop d7, just a4 simply. And how does black continue here? If bishop takes on b5, then after bishop takes on b5, check and knight back. White can just play knight f3 and here comes the knight attacking this one. And uh, black's position is very, very uncomfortable here. So c5 is uh, premature at this point. Instead, in the game, we have a6, preventing any kind of uh, knight b5 here. And now c5 is playable. In the game, we have now knight f3, e6, and now after e3, we have c5. And in this position, alpha 0 white played bishop d3. He's not fearing c4 here, chasing this bishop back, because now there's less pressure on this d4 pawn. c4 would have been a very strong move, if white would have been castled long in this game, then b5, b4 would have been very, very strong and uh, black would get a very strong attack against the white king. But of course, as we know, they can't castle in this game, so c4 is not a problem. But instead of c4, we have knight c6, putting even more pressure here on d4. And now short castling would be nice, but it's not possible. So off 0 played here king f1. His idea is to place this king into safety by going to king g1 and then try to activate this rook maybe via the h file. Off zero with black played now h5. And now we have d takes on c5, bishop takes on c5, and now queen e1. This is a good move. It supports e4 and it also makes way to this rook and also gets out of some tactics hitting both the queen and the rook in some cases. We have now h4 and you can't really allow this pawn to go to h3 and disturb the white's king side here. So we have h3. This also guards the g4 square. So now e4 is, uh, is coming. We have rook h5 supporting an e5 break maybe. But now we have e4. And taking this pawn on e4 is not black's best option because it activates this knight. Before e4, this knight didn't really have squares to go to, but now with e4, if black takes, then the knight can jump to e4 and hit this bishop on c5. And after knight takes and bishop takes, white's bishops are very, very strong. And uh, they are hitting in every direction here. Let me just uh, draw these lines here because they look very nice. There you go. Look at those bishops. They are very, very nice, having a lot of influence on this position. So d takes on e4 is uh, not best. d4 is a good alternative here for black. When after knight e2, black can continue with e5 and hit this bishop. But now after bishop g5, black loses this pawn on h4. 
So off zero didn't choose neither d4, neither d takes on e4. He played here bishop b4, pinning this knight and preparing now d4. But now we have rook d1. If now d4 comes, then white can play a3. And after bishop b5, b4. And now if the pawn takes here, then bishop c4 hitting this queen. And then white can win back the piece by taking on a5. So d4 is not that dangerous at this point. We have instead bishop d7. And now after e5 hitting this knight, instead of retreating with this knight, black counterattacks here with d4 hitting now this knight. We have pawn takes knight. And now pawn takes on c3 would be a big mistake because of pawn takes on g7. And this pawn is, is hard to stop and it will become a queen in the next move. So d takes on c3, not good, but queen f6 is good. It hits this bishop and this knight is also attacked. So black will regain his material. But now off zero playing white played here bishop g5. And now hell gets loose because now we enter the tactical phase of the game with some uh, crazy moves. Here black took on g5. But instead of taking the exchange with knight takes on g5, off zero with white first saved this knight with tempo by attacking this queen, threatening to take it with check. And now bishop takes on e1 is not so great because after knight takes on f6 and pawn takes, white wins the exchange by taking on g5. And this wouldn't be such a big problem, but being down the exchange, black really would like to keep at least the bishop pair. And the problem here with uh, bishop b4, saving the bishop, is that this knight could return to f3 and hit both of these pawns and uh, white would win h4. That would be already too much for black. So instead of bishop takes on e1, we have queen takes on f3. And now white continued with pawn takes on f3 and only now we have bishop takes on e1. We have now white winning the exchange again, but now after bishop b4 saving the bishop, there's no knight f3 hitting these pawns. So we have a3 now and bishop e7 and now f4 defending the knight. Bishop d6 hitting this pawn. At this point black is an exchange down but he has a pawn. And now after rook g1 black wins a second pawn by taking on f4. But he's only up two pawns for the exchange temporarily because now came rook g4 hitting the bishop and also this pawn. And now bishop takes on g5 is not so great because after rook takes on g5 the rook is hitting g7 and after something like g6 the rook goes back to g4 and it will capture the pawn on h4. So instead of uh, bishop takes on g5 we have e5 maintaining this bishop on this strong position. But now white can win a pawn making use of the fact that bishop takes on g5 doesn't win a piece because of rook hj check and uh, white wins the other rook. So bishop g5, not really possible here. Instead we have king e7. And now that the king is out of this check, bishop g5 is a threat. So we have knight e4. Now we have b6, rook e1, bishop e6, and now knight g3. White is preparing bishop e4 here. So we have now b5, bishop e4, king d6 defending the knight, knight e2 attacking this bishop and now bishop c4 pinning the knight b3 bishop takes knight king takes and now rook c8 eyeing the c3 and the c2 squares we have now rook g1 attacking g7 and bishop back to h6 to defend it rook h5 knight e7 and now f4 hitting this pawn and at this point black decided to give up the g7 pawn for the f4 pawn we have bishop takes on f4, rook takes on g7, but now rook c3, threatening rook e3 check, winning this bishop. White continued with king f2, but now we have rook e3 still hitting the bishop. Bishop b7, rook c3, attacking c2, bishop back to defend. Rook e3 again, bishop b7, and now after rook c3 and bishop e4, we have a repetition, and the game ends in a draw. From all the games published in the, the article, there was only one win with white in a Benoni. So all the other games ended in a draw. So a very interesting concept uh, pioneered here by Kramnik, getting rid of um, 
castling. I'm not sure I, I agree though with this idea. I'm pretty sure that once people get used to this play with uh, without castling, the game could become less exciting actually than it is today. I think that Fisher Random with uh, its more possibilities and uh, more space for creativity is our best bet for entertaining chess. So let me know what you think in the comments below. In the end, I would like to thank to René, Adolf, André and everyone else who donated to my channel. Please visit the store and check out two of my other videos on the right. Please subscribe, like and share and don't forget to ring the bell because if you want to be notified of more interesting games like this one, then just subscribing to this channel is not enough. You need to be notified in order to be able to see all my videos. Thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye bye.